We're currently in the garage because today we're going to be doing an install. Today I'm going to be doing an install on a set of Linsun solar panels for the hood of the Ram. Linsun is a solar panel manufacturer who makes solar panels for multiple applications. Anything from your home, business, boat, and vehicle. The application that I have is a 150 watt kit which consists of two 35 watt solar panels and an 80 watt solar panel. See how this install goes. Let's go on and take a look what comes in the box. All right, so in the box, we have the 35 watt solar panel for the left side of the hood. There's also a 35 watt solar panel for the right side of the hood. And then the 80 watt right here that's gonna go in the center. They include two charge controllers. I don't know yet if you can run all of this through one charge controller or if they give you two to have the option to tie into say two batteries. Originally, I was going to put this on the truck to charge the house battery. Now that I see that I'm getting two charge controllers, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the 80 watt on my starter battery, and then I'm gonna run the 235s for 70 on my house battery or accessory battery. So that way, that battery stays maintained and so does my starting battery. So on these charge controllers, it looks like it's a pretty straightforward um, wiring. You got a uh, positive and negative for the batteries. It's also got an inline fuse. You have the connections for your solar panel. I don't rightfully remember what these type of connections are called, but uh, you see them pretty standard on a lot of the solar panels. And then you have two extra wires, a um, hot wire and a ground wire. This is so you can run an additional accessory right off of, right off of this charge controller. So you can run um, an auxiliary outside your vehicle to maybe charge stuff or whatnot, maybe run your refrigerator or something. But you have that opportunity that if you, would, if you want to run something off your solar, you got that as an extra so it'll be to your battery to the solar and then to an accessory and being that I have two of these charge controllers I have that option on both which is kind of cool if I want to do that I don't think I'm gonna hook an accessory up right now but it's it's good to know that in the future if I wanted to hook something up that that is available when you make a purchase through Linsun you have the option to purchase just the solar panels you can purchase the solar panel and a charge controller and you can also purchase the solar panels the charge controller and a protection vinyl kit for the hood of your vehicle they make kits for several different vehicle applications I, I can't even name them they got so many obviously Toyota Jeep Lexus you name it they make a kit for it. go to their website and go to the automobile hood solar you'll see the drop down I mean it's just endless uh, endless applications they do for vehicles now before you get started with the install you're gonna want to wash the hood of the vehicle you're gonna want to get all that grime dirt and debris off of it because when you're laying the vinyl you want it to adhere smoothly you don't want to have any bubbles or anything up under it this vinyl is going to be the protection to your hood so that the solar panels over time don't scratch it up if you ever remove it or whatnot you'll be able to remove the solar panel and peel that vinyl back protecting the hood all that time so it didn't get any scratches or grime up underneath the panels that could have rubbed on your paint so I'm gonna start off by spraying the hood with a combination of soap and water that I put Put in the spray bottle so we can now lay this vinyl. I'm going to use some painter's tape, soap and water and the vinyl together. It'll allow me to move the vinyl around to kind of get it in position but I'm going to hold it where I want it with the tape um, and we're going to see how this goes. So you want to make sure when you're using your squeegee and getting your water out from under the vinyl, you go center out to the edge.
Good morning. It is the next day. Um, yesterday, the vinyl, it just, um, it took a toll on me. It actually took quite a bit of time and uh, the sun was starting to go down and I just didn't want to be trying to finish in the dark. On top of that, the lighting wasn't going to be that good. Um, not to say the lighting is going to be good this morning because we got quite a bit of overcast, but uh, where we left off yesterday, I did get the vinyl laid. Um, what I did is I took some painter's tape just to mock up exactly where the solar panels are going to sit on the vinyl. I did notice the vinyl is, ex is a little bit longer than the solar panel itself and, and to some people they may be okay with that. So what I'm going to do is when I lay the solar panels, I'm actually going to trim out the access vinyl. I don't want that extra. Um, on top of that, I don't think my vinyl is perfectly aligned all the way across. However, it's, it's large enough that I can set the solar panels and get those measurements perfect on every on every side so i'm just going to trim out that extra so we got a good clean neat fit and it looks uniform all the way across all right let's talk about the solar panels for a minute i've looked these things over and the build quality looks amazing on these things um, this membrane or, or film that they put on the top it looks like it can really take a beating from sticks, rocks, and normal debris you're going to pick up from just regular road driving and, and some off-roading. Um, these things are super, super thin, as you can see. And they got, a, they got quite a bit of flex to it. So you don't really have to worry about um, the, the curvature of your hood or, or making sure this lays flat. Um, the key is going to be in your prep work and how you intend on sealing it. Um, whether you want to use a bond or in my case, I'm gonna use 3M tape to hold it to the hood. I'm gonna wrap it around all the edges and in the middle, but it's flexible enough that no matter what contour or hood you got, you can make this thing lay flat. All right, so we're gonna begin prepping the back surface of the solar panel. You wanna go ahead and get this surface good and clean before you apply any 3M. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some rubbing alcohol and I'm gonna wipe this whole back surface down. I'm also gonna do the same thing with the hood. Just wanna make sure that you get it good and clean so that your 3M adheres properly. Now I chose the route of the 3M double-sided tape. I think this is half inch. When I bought this, I went over, I, I live close to the Summit Warehouse where you can get car parts and stuff. Um, I felt they would have bigger rolls. I wanted to do one inch just to have a more contact area with the 3M. Fortunately, the one inch only come in strips and I wanted to make sure I got enough 3M to go all the way around the perimeter of each solar panel, plus putting some in the middle. You can use anything from the 3M double-sided tape to the Gorilla tape. This was just what I could pick up. I actually got two rolls of this. Uh, each roll is 15 foot long. I think it was like $7 a roll. All right, now that we got the 3M on the back of the panel, um, I do recommend you do get a second set of hands. If you want to lay this straight, unless you're taking the hood off the vehicle and bringing it down to waist level, I really do strongly suggest that you have a second set of hands. Where are we at over there? It looks like right on the edge. All right, so what I'm doing now, I've already done it to the center panel. I'm gonna trim out this over layer of vinyl. I don't want the vinyl protruding past the solar panel. As I mentioned, being that there are two solar chargers, instead of running one solar charger at 150 watts to one of the batteries, I'm gonna split it between the two batteries. My starter battery is on the other side and my house accessory battery is on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount both solar chargers and I'm gonna bring 70 watts to this one and 80 watts to that one. That way I'm charging both batteries while the truck's off. I have a little place right here on the firewall that I'm going to mount these. I can mount them side by side right here. I want mine permanently mounted. I don't want to do 3M tape or zip tie or just tuck them away because I am off-road quite a bit. I don't want them coming loose and falling down while I'm driving. I want to have them stationary and in place.
Okay, so we got both charge controllers mounted. I ran the wiring harness around the firewall, tucked up neatly up high so it's away from the motor so it doesn't fall down or make any contact. I don't want anything to get, in, get near the motor where it could get hot or any of the wires could get burned through. I had previously made a wiring harness for my uh, rigid floodlights that are mounted to the hood of the truck and ran it alongside that harness. Now, I did notice when I was going through the fittings that came with the solar panel harness that... They actually did include a splitter that would allow me to run all three solar panels to the to a single charge controller. Originally, I was going to take the two outer solar panels uh, that totaling 70 watts and run them to one of the batteries on the truck and the 80 watt panel to the other based upon receiving two charge controllers and not sure if I could actually tie all three into one. Well, after finding this splitter, I see you do have the option to run off one solar charge controller versus having to run two of them to two separate batteries. And after a little bit more research on trickle charging two diesel batteries at the same time, I realized that my batteries are ran in series so reality is is if i want to run a trickle charge whether a trickle charger from the house or in this case the solar panels there's no need to split them between the two batteries you tie them into one it's going to trickle charge both of the batteries i decided to go the route of running one i did mount the second charge controller even though i don't have to just in the event maybe i'm going to do something with a uh, solar panel on the roof rack or something later i now have that option so these charge controllers are bluetooth you do have to download the solar life app in order to read the parameters and you know what the solar panels are bringing in volt wise or amp amp wise watt wise so i'm still learning some of the terminologies when it comes to solar and still kind of understanding how it all works what i can tell you and i do understand from the app is that my current batteries are maintained at 12 9 so they are normal right now as you can see on the app here it shows charge floating and discharge and all that means is basically float charging is sometimes referred to as trickle charging so the batteries are trickle charging now more or less what's happening is because the batteries are 100 percent it's taking in 98 percent allowing it to continue to trickle that two percent and back and forth so once it hits 100 it drops back down to 98 then it takes it back to 100 it drops back to 98 all it is is maintaining the charge another cool thing this app does when you're in there and you're in your settings you could click over to this monitoring tab right here and it'll actually give you a history of data each day of what you were producing um, whether that be watts amps or voltage so it's pretty cool if you're into monitoring that being that this is just simply put on my truck as a way to maintain my batteries and keep them trickle charged at all times it's more or less irrelevant to me but if you were going to be maintaining some batteries that say aren't going to be charged say by an alternator or something and strictly charged by your solar i mean i think this data i mean it is very important it's good to be able to have that option me personally i just like to kind of see where my battery are at making sure that they have a full charge at all time this this way i'm not going to be left stranded when i go to flip the ignition on